Hey guys, welcome to episode number 412. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And today I wanted to share with you a little invention that I came up with, which I think might be a first of its kind, but I'll let you guys tell me. Now this is a DIY Venturi wand, vacuum wand for your aquarium. And I'll explain how it works in a minute, but it's very similar in principle to something that you would see on a gold dredge. Um, it's using Venturi power to siphon water and waste into a compartment which can capture that waste. And um, on a gold dredge, obviously you're dredging up the, uh, the bottom of the ocean and uh, you're capturing your gold. In this case, we're capturing uh, fish waste, which isn't quite uh, as valuable as gold, but uh, the ability to remove that from your aquarium is uh, pretty important. So what I want to do is very quickly walk through all of the components here, how I built it, how it works. So this whole thing starts with this piece right here, which is a cobalt inline pump. This is a water pump, which you can hook up to um, any one of your canister filters, as you can see here. You can hook it up on the outside of your tank, you can hook it up on the inside of your tank, fully submersible. Essentially what's happening is water is being pumped from this direction into this direction. So this is underwater. It's pumping water from in your aquarium through a piece of hose, through a reducer elbow, and then into the Venturi T. And if you want a closer look at the Venturi T, if you want to know exactly how it works and how it creates a siphon, I did a video on that last week. This is the magical piece right here, which allows this water flow to be pushed in a jet-like fashion through this Venturi T, and it allows um, this side of the T, which is just a uh, 45 degree elbow and a piece of pipe, to start um, a siphon, and it sucks water up through that, and that's where you're gonna be uh, pulling your fish waste through, up through this T, and then the water gets blasted in this direction up this tube. So we've got a, um, I think it's about a, a 210 gallon per hour flow here through this cobalt inline pump. Um, we've got a three quarter inch PVC here, we've got three quarter inch here, and uh, we've got one inch PVC here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And this took a little bit of devising to figure out, but essentially what I needed to do was create um, like a vacuum bag, something, something that could capture and hold a whole bunch of uh, wastewater without getting plugged up. So this is what I've come up with. It might not be the most elegant solution. You can probably downsize it, downscale it a little bit to make it a little bit uh, lighter, a little bit more user friendly. But um, here's what I came up with. So essentially, I took the one inch PVC line and I ran that all the way up through and uh, I put a cap on it. That means that the water cannot escape through the handle that you're holding. Then what I did was I took a, I believe this is a three inch PVC cap. I have two of those. And um, what I did was I drilled a hole so that a one inch uniseal could fit on both ends. And that's important because um, I want um, a tight fit, a, a watertight fit, so that you don't have any waste that's able to sort of escape through either one of these caps. And it also uh, works to sort of hold this all in place. If you've ever worked with the Uniseals, you know that it forms a really good seal, a really good bond, and um, just, just by, based on friction and pressure, it stays in place. So when I push these two caps together, they stay in place, they stay locked right in place. And in between that, what I've done is I've just taken some plastic hardware mesh and I've wrapped that around onto itself and then I just put a couple zip ties through that to keep it in place. If I wanted to, I could pull these uniseals apart on both ends and I could take this piece of plastic out if I needed to, but uh, nothing is cemented in place, nothing is glued in place at all in this entire unit. 
Um, it can be completely disassembled if and when I need to. And the only thing I did, the only other thing I did, was you can see there are a bunch of holes drilled on that one inch PVC pipe. And I made sure to drill a whole bunch of holes on the section of that one inch pipe that was going to be inside of this chamber. So, this is our chamber for our waste. And the only other thing we need to do is take some blue bonded filter foam, uh, filter pad, along with a few rubber bands, and just wrap this in such a way and attach it with rubber bands in such a way that we have a chamber um, which doesn't allow any of that wastewater to get out. You'll see I cut it a little bit large so that it overhangs on each end um, of these three inch caps. And then as long as I place the rubber bands on each one of those, then none of that waste that gets caught on the inside of this chamber can escape. So that's how it works. Again, we can completely disassemble this thing if we want to. None of it is glued in place. We can modify this. So if we want to make anything taller or shorter or um, anything we need to do to adjust it, we can do that. And um, this is fairly large. It's fairly heavy. And it's going to be something that you're going to need a fairly large tank to uh, utilize it with. Uh, something like this, it works in a 40 gallon breeder. Um, I don't think that it would work in a smaller size tank. So it works for me because I have all 40 gallon breeders. If I wanted to, I could probably get this to be a little bit smaller using similar parts and uh, get it to fit in a smaller tank. But for me, this works. Again, I have bare bottom tanks so again, this works. I won't be sucking up any gravel or sand uh, in the process. All I'm going to be sucking up is the fish waste on the bottom of my, of my aquarium. The last thing to note is actually two things to note. One is um, that this uses a power line. This uses electricity. So if you're not comfortable with using electricity around water, please don't attempt this project. Um, this is fully submersible, so there's really no problem. You just want to make sure that you don't get your power strip or your power line or anything like that anywhere near your water. Super, super important. And uh, the other thing is, if you don't have a bare bottom tank, this probably isn't going to work as well or at all for you. So definitely go with those bare bottom tanks. All right, guys, let's put this back together, I'll put it in the tank, and you can see how it works. All right guys, so here we are. We've got the blue bonded filter pad attached using a number of rubber bands here. That's creating a chamber where our waste is going to collect. And over here you see we have a switch, and that is on our extension cord to make sure that I have the fine control to turn that cobalt pump on or off when I want to and when I go in between tanks. So, the idea here is to clean as many tanks as possible, as fast as possible, without necessarily removing water from these aquariums. Again, I am on a automatic water change system, so I don't need to change water by siphoning waste out of these tanks and refilling it with clean water. There's clean water dripping into these tanks all day long. So, I'm just gonna flip that on and uh, just need to make sure that all the air bubbles come out of the cobalt pump. And then again, we've got our Venturi right there. And this is our siphon tube. And as you can see, this siphon tube is easily able to pick up anything that I run this PVC tube over. And it's able to do it with just about the same strength as your typical siphon tube would if you were to just be siphoning into a five gallon bucket to, uh, to clean the bottoms of your tanks. So. I've tried this and I was able to do all eight of my 40 gallon breeder tanks 
and I was able to do it without stopping. I was able to do it without changing a filter pad and uh, I was able to do it without impacting the, uh, the water volume in any of these tanks. And then at the end of the day, all I had was a piece of blue bonded filter foam with a whole bunch of fish waste on it that I was able to uh, just clean. I went to the sink, cleaned, it, cleaned the, uh, the blue bonded filter pad, and then I was ready to go cleaning all of my fish tanks once again. So definitely reusable. The other nice thing is this connection right here allows me to pop that one inch pipe off from the Venturi T and it allows me to take this entire stick of blue bonded filter foam over to the sink and uh, change that out, swap it out, clean it, whatever I need to do. All right, so this tank is now clean, or at least mostly clean for the purposes of this video. I'm gonna shut that off. And what we're gonna do is just pull this out. We'll let it drain for a quick second so we don't make a huge mess. And then I'm just gonna go to my next tank. And again, we're gonna make sure all the bubbles, all the air gets out of that cobalt pump. We don't want that to be full of air. And if I had two hands and I wasn't operating this camera, you can see how I could just keep one hand on this switch and the other hand on the uh, handle itself. And I could just switch from tank to tank to tank. And within 60 seconds or so, I can clean each one of these tanks and then we're done. And uh, the good part about this is this is so easy, it can be a daily activity. Um, oftentimes I'll leave this chore to once a week because I don't really need to clean uh, super often because I do have it on an automatic water change system. But with this being so easy, um, I can just do this once a day make sure that the bottom is completely clear of debris and then I'm fine, my fish are fine and everything looks nice and tidy and clean. Um, sometimes the flow is impacted a little bit if you do have air bubbles or, or air trapped in uh, the pump itself or in any of the lines. So sometimes you just have to, well, have to watch out for that. But otherwise, this works pretty well to uh, capture all of the waste, all of the debris off the bottom of your tank. If we can get this to focus, you can see these flakes were fed earlier today and now they're gone. So apologies for the lack of dexterity here with operating this thing. Again, I've got the camera in one hand and I'm just sort of scratching this thing around with the other hand to show that it's able to pick anything up off the bottom of this tank. Now, um, if I was to improve this, the next few things that I would focus on doing is, one, I could increase the power of this pump by getting a stronger pump, like a fountain pump, that's able to do 300 or 400 gallons per hour. Connect it in exactly the same way. That would help to increase the siphon or suction strength of um, this side of the Venturi T. Two, I would probably reduce the overall size of this vac wand to make it something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more lightweight, and something that could fit in a smaller aquarium. Because as you can see, this is a 40 gallon breeder, and that's how large this thing is. But it works fine for my purposes, and uh, it actually works great for my purposes and I'm pretty happy with the results. So anyways, guys, this is like version four of a vac wand. Uh, I've been sort of playing with this idea throughout the years. I've relied on air and airlift tubes for a long time, but when I saw that Venturi T, I knew that this was possibly the best answer to the problem. So this is my first attempt at a Venturi vacuum wand. Again, it doesn't replace a water change, but because I'm already changing water automatically, it's perfect for me. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. I hope this sparks your creativity to go out and try to create one of these yourself. If you're interested in buying any of the hard to find parts in this picture, 
I'll leave all those links in the description below so you can check those out, go buy them yourself and go try it out because it does work and it can make your life a little bit easier. So anyways guys, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.